All right, we're going to look at the most complex shader and see if we can't figure it out without ever needing my help. Um, well, I'm going to talk you through a way of learning this stuff. So here I have a thing. It's called self-illuminated oops, parallax specular. So this has got a lot of stuff on it. Look at it. It's got four maps. What I'm seeing, if I never understood the engine, it has a gloss map which is on the alpha and it has a color map they're both combined it has an alum map it looks like an alpha it has a normal map with no alpha or nothing and then it has a separate alpha map for height okay well what about this we know how to make these others those are pretty easy Let me open this back up. Okay, I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to make that an alpha. Looks like it's already got an alpha, so that's good. And in here, I'm just going to paint some green. This is a transparent layer. If I hide this bottom one, look what happens. So I'm just going to go in here and paint some of these green on the corners. And I got this set to probably an opacity of 7.2. So it could tile up quite quickly if I brush over a few times. Okay, and then I'm going to move over to this brush. This brush is pretty neat. And I'm just going to lay down some certain different textures here. Oh, that one's a little bright. That down just to show you what this looks like. This is how you really learn this stuff, really. I mean, what you do, you take the obvious and you play around with it until you find out some cool tricks for it. No instructor in the world's going to know everything, but you know, a great way to, to circumvent any instructor, not just putting myself out as a job, is be a scientist. That's really what it takes. Be a scientist. Don't try to model London or New York right off the bat. Take the time to learn the properties through experiments. Okay, so let's look at this. We're going to hide this one or just destroy it. Let's destroy it. We have this, and let's save this out. Desktop. Unity Workflow, Game, Assets, Shaders. I'll just put Glow. Looks like I have to use my mouse. save. All right, let's go back to Unity and see if we can make these things glow green in certain areas. Okay, let's look for that map. If you can see, it makes it all kind of weird. And now we can adjust things like specular color. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't really pick up on the color color of things. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just knows where to glow, and that's it. So if I was to shut off all the lights in the room, 
And I'll just do that real quick. Lights. Let's just destroy all lights. It just glows in those areas. But it doesn't really understand green. It just understands glow. Now, as soon as a light is in the area, it's going to go like this. Game objects. Create other. Point light. Okay, if I want a tin of green, I could just put a tin of green here in the specular range. And then it looks like it's glowing green a little bit. If I rank up the shininess, you can see that it's very selective. So there's a lot of play here. Here's some... Tin it green. That looks kind of neat. So there's a lot of play, but there's not... It, when you're dealing with self-illuminated stuff, it's just either bright or not bright. And down here below, we have the emissive light mapper. So if I go like 10, it might glow a little bit brighter. So the spots are now a little bit wider. All right, but that's the emissive channel. Now, in most game engines, you do have a little bit more play there as far as the emissibility, but for right now, we do not. There is a few other channels that we could play around with in here, like vertex lit and stuff like that, but we haven't covered that stuff yet. Very sweet, very fun to play with, but... Um, that's how I decompile things to make sure that I can understand and learn it. I'll just break break it down to a small, simple experiment, and then I go on. And then I can come up with some pretty happy accidents just doing that. As you can see, just this basic stuff looks really good, but anytime you have a harsh contrast like this, it doesn't look as good. So in GIMP, the ones that looked the best was this, just this brush right here mixed with this brush right here that was subtle enough to be able to pull off. Anytime I introduce this really harsh contrast pencil thing, it looks stupid. Now that we see all of this, let's kind of look at a practical application on an asset like an axe in the next video.